Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God for another Wednesday. To him alone be all the glory. Hallelujah. Savior in. Then Jesus came like a singer in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light. Darkness no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in his sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Just like a blind man, I wandered alone. Working some fears I claim on my own. And like the blind man that got you back to his side. Praise the Lord, I saw the light, I saw the light, the light. You are highly welcome, no more in darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. No more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw. I want to wonder and pray. Oh, yes. The gate and arrows the way. Yes. Walk for the right. Praise the Lord. I saw the the song say I saw the light. The light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more night. Now I'm so happy. No sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. I, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in time. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. That's the title of the song. Oh, yes. Let's listen to it one more time. Mm -hmm. I wonder so aimless, life filled with sin. I will not let my dear Savior in. But Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. The light. I saw the light. No more in darkness. No more in... Oh, yes, now I'm so happy. No sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. Just like you are highly welcome as you are joining. This is Birian Academy, the Wednesday Bible teaching of Christ Apostolic Church Vineyard of Comfort, Calgary. You are highly welcome as you are joining us. The light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more 
No more now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Oh, yes. Mm. I saw the light. Oh, yes. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I was a fool to oh, yes. I was a fool to wander astray. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way. I for the right. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. No more. Oh, yes, now I'm so happy. No sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. You are highly welcome. We are starting our Bible study in the next three minutes. You can be sharing with your loved ones and friends. God bless you. No sorrow inside. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. The song is saying, praise the Lord, I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in dark, no more night. I saw the light. That's the title of the song by a man called Hank Williams, uh, 1948. May we all see the light brighter than we have seen it before in the mighty name of Jesus. May we see the light better than the way we have seen it, brighter in the name of Jesus. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior win. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. We are going to start our teaching in the next two minutes. Those of us who are already online, the song going behind in the background is, I saw the light. You can look at it yourself on YouTube by Hank Williams. I saw the light. It's a song of testimony. Like Apostle Paul also saw the light on the way to Damascus. And to those of us who have seen the light, I'm praying that we are going to see it better and brighter. And those who are here to see the light of the gospel, may the Lord give to them also, as he gave to Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus, in the mighty name of Jesus. I saw the light no more in darkness, no more nights. Now I'm so glad. No more sorrow in sight. I saw the light. I saw the light. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Once again, I welcome you to Berean Academy, the Wednesday Bible teaching of Christ Apostolic Church Vineyard of Comfort Cagre Assembly. We need to give glory to God for bringing us into the year 2022 in peace and not in pieces. This is the first Wednesday we are witnessing in this new year. And it is my prayer that God, who has been faithful in seeing us through, in bringing us to this new year, and the first Wednesday therein, will be our help, not just in all the Wednesday this year, but in all the days of the year 2022, 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Those of us who are already online, I welcome you to another moment of sitting at the feet of the Lord, hearing what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And I'm praying, like the song that we just had at the background, that we too we are going to see the light, the light of God. It will dawn upon our heart, upon our souls, upon our minds. And we shall see better and clearer the reason for our faith in Jesus Christ, in Jesus' mighty name. Wherever you are joining from, I want you to adjust yourself in order for you to receive the word of the Lord. For I know that tonight again, the Spirit of God, who is the inspirer of the word, and who spoke through the apostles and the prophet, we also minister to us, even in, to, in this Bible study tonight, in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your faithfulness and for your loving kindness in bringing us into the year 2022 in peace and not in pieces. Thank you because you are the light of our salvation. And thank you because tonight again that we have come, O oh God, to hear you. You will minister to us by the help of your spirit. Take control, O Lord, and let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. People of God, once again, you are welcome to Berean Academy, the Wednesday Bible teaching of Christ Apostolic Church, Vineyard of Comfort, Calgary Assembly, Canada. It is my prayer that as you have come tonight, you will be blessed and your understanding will be multiplied in the things of God, in Jesus' mighty name. And when we say Berean Academy, what do we mean by the Berean? Uh, let me quickly clear this for us before we go into our subject for teaching tonight. Uh, the word Berean could be found in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. That's where we found, first and foremost, the word Berean. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, uh, verses 10 to 11. And I'm going to read from NIV translation. The Bible says, As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now, the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. People of God, this is where we came in contact with the word the Bereans. According to the scripture, the people of Bereans who accepted the gospel of Christ from, from Apostle to Paul, the Bible says, number one, they were of noble character than the Thessalonian Christians. That is, the Christians in Berean, when you compare them side by side with the Christian in Thessalonica, they were better. Now, why does the Bible say they were better? Is it because they have a better structure? Or is it because they have a better music? Is it because they have a better... Mention it. No. The Bible says they were better more noble than the Christian in Thessalonica because of one thing. What was that? The Bible says they used to examine the scriptures every day in order for them to see if what Apostle Paul was preaching to them was true or not. That's the meaning of the Berean Christians. That is, their own attitude was to examine the scripture to confirm if what they are preaching to them or what they are teaching them is actually the truth. And if I will be honest with you, this is a very noble attitude that an average Christian in our days and time should cultivate. Yeah, I mean again, this is a noble attitude. I'm going to encourage you listening to me in this age and time to cultivate, that is, the attitude of examining the scripture yourself, after you might have heard from a preacher or a teacher, examine the scripture if what they are saying is actually the truth or not. 
because we are in a generation whereby the word of God is getting scarce, according to the prophecy of Amos, that a time is coming where there will be scarcity of the word of God. So we are, that, we are in that generation. Most of the preachings and the teachings today, if you are like the Berean that you examine the scripture yourself, you will know whether they are actually the word of God or figment of human imagination. And I want to encourage those of us that we are joining together in the year 2022. Please be like the Berean. Men and women, boys and girls, who after they have listened to a preaching or a teaching of the word of God, they go back to their own Bible to examine it, whether those things were true or not. May the Spirit of God give you understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. And I'm trying to let you know, this kind of exercise call for a commitment, call for a dedication, call for seriousness on your own part, so that you are not going to be misled, so that you will not take poison for food. You will not take poison for food. And I'm trusting the Spirit of God that it will help you in this regard in the name of Jesus. So that is we, that is where we came about the Berean. Christians who used to examine the scriptures to confirm if what they are learning, if what they are hearing is the truth. May the Lord help you in that journey this year, 2022, in Jesus' mighty name. Having said that, our subject for tonight says, faith without repentance. Faith without repentance. That is the teaching we want to examine tonight. It may sound like a contradiction, but as we go into the pages of the scripture, we are going to see what the Spirit of the Lord actually wants to pass across to us. Faith without repentance. Number one thing we are going to consider tonight is that in the teaching of Jesus Christ, faith and repentance are joined together. Yeah, I mean again, in the teaching of Jesus Christ, Faith and repentance are joined together. Now, let's see what I'm trying to say. Gospel of Mark, chapter 1 and verse 15. Gospel of Mark, chapter 1 and verse 15. I read from NIV translation. Mark, chapter 1 and verse 15. The Bible says, let me start from verse 14. Mark, chapter 1, 14 and 15. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Repent and believe the good news. You are going to see that from the first preaching of Jesus Christ, repent and faith were combined. Yeah, that again. The word repent and believe, that is faith, were combined even in the first preaching, in the first teaching of Jesus Christ. Now, what do we mean when we say in the first teaching of Jesus Christ? Jesus said, repent first, believe the gospel, because the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, let us break down that verse of the scripture. The word repent or repentance, brothers and sisters listening to me, simply means turning away from our own way of living and doing things. Repent or repentance means you turn away from your own way of living and doing things. Or let me put it this way. Turn from your own way of living life and doing things in this life. That's the word repentance. And when you look at the Bible, let me show us people of God, Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6. The book of Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6. Hear the word of the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 6, we, we all like sheep, we all like sheep have gone astray each of us has turned to his own way. Each of us has turned to his own way. Everybody 
do meet in life as his own way of living, as his own way of doing things. Me that I'm talking to you, I have my own way of living, I have my own way of doing things. But repentance is you and myself turn away from our own way of living and our own way of doing things. That is what the word repentance simply means. Now, somebody may say, in a practical term, what does it really connote? Or how can we describe it in a practical terms? I will use the Bible to make that description. What repentance means, that is, turn from your own way to the way of God. In a practical terms, what does it mean? In the book of Luke chapter 19, Gospel of Luke chapter 19 and verse 8. Gospel of Luke chapter 19 and verse 8. I read once again. Gospel of Luke chapter 19 and verse 8. Hear the word of the Lord. Luke 19, 8. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord Jesus Christ, Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Now, what does that mean? The way of life of Zacchaeus before he met the Lord was cheating people. That was his own way of life. He, that was the way he was making it in life. He specializes in cheating people. That was his own way of life. But when he came in contact with Christ Jesus, he said, Jesus Christ, I'm going to turn from this way of life. That's why he said, if I have cheated anyone of anything, I'm going to pay them back. Are you following now? So repentance means turn from your own way of living and doing things to God's own way of living and doing things. Please hear me again. Repentance is not something too complicated. It is you turn away from your own way of doing things and your own way of living life. That is what repentance means. And it could practically mean different things for different people. That's why I said, practically for somebody like Zacchaeus, repentance is, I have been living by cheating. Before I came to Christ, now that I have come to Christ, I'm not going to live by cheating again. That is what it meant for him. That's what repentance meant for him. And practically, you know the answer Jesus gave to him. Jesus says, today, salvation has entered your house. Salvation has entered your house. What am I trying to say? It is repentance and faith that Jesus first and foremost preached. According to Mark chapter 1 and verse 15. And I'm trying to tell you the meaning of the word repentance there. Then when we talk about faith, because Jesus said repent and believe. Believe simply means have faith in Jesus Christ. Put your trust in him. So when these two were put together, repentance and faith, Jesus makes us to understand something. That these two things brings about something. Let's go back to Mark chapter 1. Gospel of Mark chapter 1 and verse 15 now. I'm going to read again. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near. So what Jesus is saying in Mark 1 15 is this. By repentance and faith, we enter the kingdom of God. Even though while we are still living here on earth. Yeah, I mean again, it is through repentance and faith that we enter the kingdom of God. Oh my God. Hear that one more time. It is through repentance and faith, Mark chapter 1 verse 15, that we enter the kingdom of God, that we become the citizens of heaven, even though we are still living our lives here on earth. And like I've said, permit me to say it again. Repentance means you turn from your own way of living and doing things to God's own way of living and doing things. That is what repentance means. It is true that, and combined with our faith in Jesus Christ, that we become the citizen of the kingdom of God. The Bible says, 
the time is near. The kingdom of God is near. So repent and believe so that you can enter the kingdom of God. Now, if you are under the sound of my voice, let me make this clear to you. You see, to those of us who are following Jesus Christ in spirit and in truth, one thing about us that you need to understand is that our citizenship is in heaven. Even though we are living here on earth, like I'm also a citizen of Canada, but in my spiritual state, my citizenship is in heaven because through repentance and my faith in Jesus Christ, I have entered into the kingdom of God. So I'm trying to let you see the importance of the two. Repentance on one side and faith in Jesus Christ on the other side is what brings us into the kingdom of God. Is what makes God to call us his own. Hear me very well. It is what gives us a place in eternity with God. Repentance on one side, that is turning from our own way of living to God's way of living, to and also faith in Jesus Christ. That is what repentance simply means, and faith in Christ. So it is what gives us a place in eternity with God. So hear me once again before we jump that. Mark 1, 15, that Jesus first preached. He says, repent and believe. Because he true both those that we become the citizen of the kingdom of God. Even though we are still living here on earth, but we are citizens of the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible will say in the book of 2 Timothy, the Lord knows those who are his. The Lord knows those who are his. Even though we are living in the world, the Lord is not unaware of those that belong to him. And I'm showing you practically tonight that what makes us to become the citizen of kingdom of God is repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And people of God, I want you to listen to this teaching one more time. It's going to help you. Now, having said that, but our teaching says faith without repentance. What brings us to this? We now discover that even though Jesus preached faith and repentance in the beginning of his ministry, as his ministry was continuing among people and from place to places while he was here on earth, we began to see that some people have faith, they don't have repentance. And that's what brings about this teaching that says, faith without repentance. Yeah, I mean, again, what Jesus taught in the beginning was repentance and faith goes together. But in the course of his ministry, as he was preaching from one town to another, we discover, as we are going to see tonight, that in some places, we could only find faith, we couldn't find repentance. And in some places, maybe we could find repentance, we couldn't find faith. That is, what Jesus put together, the people on their own, they put it asunder. And that's why we want to learn about this subject of faith without repentance. Now, let's now go to our Bible text for tonight. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. If you are writing down from verse 20 to verse 24, Gospel of Matthew chapter 11 from verse 20 to 24. Now, people of God, let me begin by letting you know one thing. Matthew 11, 20 to 24, it is the actual word of Jesus Christ. What I'm saying is this, what we want to read now is heavy. It is non-negotiable. It is not something that we can that we can push aside this is the word of our lord and savior jesus christ so i want us to attend to it with all sense of seriousness now if you are ready let's go matthew 11 20 to 24 i'm going to read the entire verse then jesus 
began to denounce the cities in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will go down to the depths. If the miracle performed in Sodom, if the, if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it will have remained to this day. But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. Now, people of God, like I've said, this is the word that came from the mouth of Jesus Christ. Those in biblical studies, they will say, Ipsisima verba Yesu. That is the actual word of Jesus Christ. Permit me for my Latin expression. Ah, what am I trying to say? We can't push this aside. Now, there are three cities that were mentioned in this passage that I have read. There was a city mentioned, Korazin. The second city was Bethsaida. And we know Bethsaida, that's where Jesus healed a man who has, been, who has been sick for 38 years. And the third city was the city of Capernaum. Please listen to this very carefully. The city of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. All these cities were in the land of Israel in the days of Jesus Christ. We are not doing geography. This is Bible study. Now, these three cities, the people in this city, the Bible says something good about them. What was it that was good about them? They had faith. Yeah, I mean again, this three city, the people in those cities, they had faith. How do we know that they had faith? The Bible says in Matthew 11 and verse 20, that was where Jesus performed most of his miracles. Yeah, I mean again, Wherever Jesus performed most of his miracles, that is where we can say people in those places have faith. How do we know this? The Bible will answer for us. The Bible makes us to understand in Matthew chapter 13, Gospel of Matthew chapter 13, that Jesus in verse 57 to 58, I read, Matthew chapter 13, verse 57 to 58, the Bible says, and they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, only in his own town and in his own house is a prophet without honor. And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Can you see here? In the hometown of Jesus Christ, that was Bethlehem. The Bible says Jesus could not perform many miracles there because the people there they lack faith. So it's just a matter of turn the table around. Where Jesus performed most of his miracle, the people there had more faith. Hallelujah. So what I'm trying to say is that we don't need to take it away from the people of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. Because in those three cities, the many miracles of Jesus were performed. That is to say, the people in those cities they were people of great faith. And I need to be honest with you. For us to receive from God, most importantly, miracles, most importantly, blessings, most importantly, our expectations, faith is required. Yeah, I mean, again, for the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And the Bible also says in that Hebrew, it is true faith that the elders, they obtain good report. The Bible also even said of Abraham, by faith, it was, it's Mama Sarah, by faith, she was able to conceive, even though she was already past the age of childbearing. So we need to commend the people of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum for their faith. Because without their faith, Jesus wouldn't have been able to perform many of the miracles that we that the Bible records in their favor. So what am I trying to say, people of God? In these three cities, 
Korazi, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. Jesus performed most of his miracles because the people there, they were people of faith. But you see, our teaching, don't, don't forget, is talking about faith without repentance. But having given them credit for this, we now discover again that it was these three cities also that Jesus rained curses upon. Please hear me very well. These three cities, though they received or they were recipient of most of the miracles of Jesus Christ, they were also the recipient of his curses. Is that not a contradiction? Please hear that again. They were res recipient of most of the miracles of Christ, but unfortunately, they were also the recipient of his curses. Then somebody need to ask the question, why would the same group of people who were recipient of the largest portion of miracles ended up being the recipient of the curse that came from the mouth of Jesus Christ. And for your information, if a witch curse you, Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, we can, overthrow, we can overrule it. If a necromancer curse you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we can overrule it. Even if a false prophet curse you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we can overrule it. But you know one thing, I need to be honest. If Jesus cursed somebody, no other person can overrule it. And that is where the danger of our lesson tonight comes from. Faith without repentance. Now, from what I've just said, I can tell you up front that faith without repentance will bring a curse of the Lord. That is, if somebody is demonstrating faith, if somebody is activating faith without a corresponding repentance, that is, turning away from his own way of life, from his own way of doing things, to God's own way of living, that person is a recipient of the cause of the Lord, both here in present time and in eternity to come. And that is where the fear of this lesson is coming from. And like I'm saying, I'm telling you up front that if somebody is exercising faith, if somebody is demonstrating faith without repentance, that person is only asking for the cause of the Lord upon his life, both in the present and in eternity to come. But I pray for you, that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So what am I trying to say? Now, let's look at the scripture here. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 20 again. The Bible says, I want to read from another translation of the scripture. The Bible says, yeah, now, the Bible says, the Bible says, Jesus began to denounce. He began to denounce. He began to curse. He began to operate the city in which most of his miracle had been performed. And don't and please note the denunciation. The denunciation is woe to you, Korazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. I want you to know that word. Woe. Calamity unto you, Korazin. That is the people of Korazin. Calamity unto you, the people of Bethsaida. Calamity unto you, the people of Capano. Why was Jesus making a woe over them? The answer is there in Matthew chapter 11. Again, the Bible says in 1120, then Jesus began to denounce the city in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent, not because they did not receive. Can you see here now? They received the miracle, but they did not repent of their way of life. That was what brought about the woe on them. Brothers and sisters listening to me tonight, this is the beginning of another year. I want to assure you that by mercy and grace, you and myself, we are going to receive a lot of miracles from the Lord this year. We are going to receive a lot of blessings from the Lord this year. We are going to receive a lot of packages 
good things from the Lord this year. But my fear as a preacher of the word and a teacher of the word, and as a pastor to some of you who are listening to me, is this. If we receive, are we going to manifest, show forth the corresponding repentance that the Lord is expecting? So that our case and our story will not be like these people of Kurazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, who only receive the miracle, but do not repent of their way of life. And for that reason, Jesus began to rain curses upon them. May that not be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, let me tell us this. Maybe if you are in our fellowship last Sunday. No, this is similar to the same people in Luke chapter 13 that we read. People will say to Jesus Christ, we ate and drank with you, and you taught on our street. And Jesus will say to them, I never knew you. Whereas they heard with him, they drank with him, they, he taught in their streets, they listened to him, but he says he will tell them, I never knew you. So the same thing is similar to this, because the people in Korazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, they may be claiming we are receiving the miracle from the Lord because we have faith in him, because we believe in him. He is doing signs and wonders in our midst, and all those kind of things and wonderful and fantabulous testimonies they may be sharing among themselves. But the Lord, who is the doer of that miracle for them, is now raining a curse upon them, saying, woe unto you, woe unto you. And we are trying to find out why. And the Bible is saying it's because they did not repent. That is, they did not turn from their way of life to the way of life that pleases the Lord. Yeah, that again. The reason why the Lord Jesus Christ was raining curses upon these people was simply be not because they were not receiving his miracles, but because they were not repenting of their way of life. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you a few things here. And then we are going to draw the lesson and we are going to pray. What are the few things I want to say here? Number one, to be honest, miracles, signs, and wonders, like we saw in this city of Korazin and Bethsaida, is evidence of faith at work. When we put our faith at work, when we activate our faith, I tell you the truth, it puts God to work signs and wonders and miraculous in our lives. And I'm praying for you like I'm praying for myself that our faith this year, 2022, will not be weak, but will be strong to command supernatural results in all areas of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the first thing I want you to note in this study. But number two thing is this. Causes, causes is an evidence of no repentance. That is, causes from the Lord is an evidence of no repentance. That is, wherever God does not find repentance, or let me make it plain, in whoever's life that the Lord could not find the fruit of repentance, I tell you the truth, that person is under the curse of God. May that not be you. May that not be me. Both in this present life and in the life to come, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hear me again. Anyone in whose life the Lord Jesus Christ could not find the fruit of repentance, that is, a change of life from his own way of living, from his own way of doing things, to God's way of living and doing things, the curse of God rests upon such person. And for your information, you know this. Jesus is not just in city of. Uh, in, it's not just in this city alone. The Bible says when Jesus approached a fig tree, looking for a fruit, Jesus was looking for a fruit, and the tree has leaves. The Bible says Jesus placed a curse on that tree, not because it does not have leaf; it has plenty of leaves, but because that tree does not have fruit. And I talk, like I told us in our fellowship here on Sunday, it is the fruit the Lord is looking for and not the leaves. 
Yamin again, the, the fruit is the evidence of repentance. The fruit in your life and in my life is our change way of life. That is the fruit. It is the fruit of love, of joy, of peace. It is the fruit of repentance. It is the fruit of gentleness, the fruit of humility. Because those ones are not our natural way of life. It is the fruit of forgiveness. Those are the things that the Lord is looking for. And wherever, in whoever's life, the Lord is not finding that. The Lord, even if the Lord is a person, healing the person from sickness, blessing the person financially, making things working for the person, the cause of God is upon that person both in the present time and in eternity to come. And that's what we want to check before it is too late for you and for me. I pray it will not be too late for you in the mighty name of Jesus. So what are we trying to say, people of God? In this story of these three cities, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, who were recipients of the miracles of Jesus compared to any other cities when Jesus was alive, what are the lessons for us to learn from this? So that we too, we are not going to be in their situation, either now or on the day that we are face to face with Jesus Christ. Lesson number one. One can receive miracles from the Lord, yet be finally caused by God. Yamin again. The first lesson I want us to learn here is that Somebody can receive miracles, blessings, provisions. I mean from God. I'm not saying from Satan. I mean from God. Because of the magnanimity of God. Because of the generosity of God. But finally, that person may come under the curse of God. Let me give you one practical example that happened to one of the greatest men of God in the Bible. Now, the Bible says, in the book of Numbers 20, God told prophet Moses, speak to the rock and water will come out. But the Bible says, by the time prophet Moses got to the rock, he struck the rock. Now, let me, let's look at it. God said he should speak to the rock, water will come out. But prophet Moses struck the rock. The normal thing that should happen is that water should not come out. Because he disobeyed God. God says, speak to the rock. He smote the rock. So, normal thing is that water should not come out. But the Bible says, water still came out. And the people of Israel were celebrating. Moses has performed another miracles. Moses has performed another miracles. Not knowing that finally, Moses will not get to the promised land because of that act. Now, hear me very well. Miracles happen. But it stopped Moses from getting to the promised land. So that's the first lesson I want you to learn here. It is possible one can receive miracles. One can receive blessings. Even God can even use somebody to perform miracles. God can even use somebody to perform signs and wonders. And finally, that person is caused by God. Like Jesus was doing here to the people of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. They receive all the miracles. Even many miracles that we, the Bible even may not record for us, but they ended up being cursed by the Lord. Brothers and sisters listening to me, I pray for you and myself that in our journey in life, and by the time we are going to translate into eternity, either by rapture or by death, may we not be among them that are cursed in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you one more time. In our own journey in life, and by the time we will translate into eternity, either by the rapture, which is the expectation of the saints, or by death, may we not be among those that will be cursed by God in Jesus' mighty name. But the reality of the lesson we are learning is that it is possible. Somebody can receive all diverse of miracles, blessing, provision from God, and yet ended up being caused by the Lord. Matt, excuse me, Matthew 11, verse 20 to 24. You can read it by yourself as a Berean after the teaching. 
Number two lesson from this biblical story. I said, physical, temporal, and material blessings from God is not equal to approval by God. Physical, temporal, and material blessings from God is not equal to approval from God. The people of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, they received physical, temporal, and physical miracle from God, but Jesus did not approve them for that. Rather, he disapproved them for not repenting. Please, I want you to get this thing very clearly. If our, if I, let me say this now. The city that received most of the miracles of Jesus Christ, if it is in today's time, I think that city deserves an award. But in, this, in the sight of Jesus Christ that gave them all those miracles, they did not deserve an award, they deserve a curse. So, physical, material, temporal blessing is not necessarily an approval from the Lord. People of God, I want you to take note of that. He says, they received the miracle, but they did not repent. Hence, I am cursing them. I am cursing them. May that not be our story in Jesus' name. Now, the third lesson, which is the way I'm actually going, is this. You see, while we are receiving miracles, while we are receiving signs, while we are receiving blessings, while we are, while we are receiving breakthrough, while we are receiving favor from God, I want you to note one thing. This is the third lesson. Let us always check our lives if we are repenting of things in our lives that are not pleasing to God. Yeah, I mean, again, the third lesson where I'm going to actually dwell much is this. While we are receiving miracles, while we are receiving blessings, while we are receiving favor, goodness and kindness from God and not from Satan, while we are receiving all our expectation from the Lord. The third lesson for us to be better than the people of Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum is to be checking our lives on the other side if we are repenting from the things that are not pleasing to the Lord. Now, let me take us back to the Bible here. You know, Jesus said something here. Jesus said to the people of Capernaum, Matthew 11 and verse 23, he says, and you, Capernaum, will you be lifted up to the skies? No, you will go down to the depths. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it will have remained to this day. Now, look, I want, you to, I want to explain something here. Jesus was comparing the people of Capernaum to the people of Sodom. And one thing we know about the people of Sodom is that they were full of sexual sin from fornication to adultery to homosexuality. Yamin mean again, the people of Sodom, they were full of sin, of sexual immorality. So, which suggests that the people of Capernaum, while they were receiving the miracles, while they were receiving the blessings from Jesus Christ, they were still indulging in sexual immorality. Because Jesus said, if the people of Sodom received the miracle, they will have repented. They will have repented means they will have stopped indulging in the sin of sexual immorality, which we know them for. I just use that because it's very plain truth. When we are talking about the people of Tyria and Sidon, those ones may be sounding strange to many of us, but at least to Sodom, Sodom is not strange to us. So which means... These people of Capernaum, while they were receiving miracles, signs and wonders, they were still indulging in sexual sin. And like I told those in our fellowship on Sunday, let me be honest with you. The only person that cannot but see you, even in the secret of your secret place, is the eyes of the Lord. And that is why these people of Capernaum are receiving the curse from God. Because the people were seeing them as recipients of miracles. But Jesus was seeing them as people that were indulging in sexual sin in their sacred places. 
People will see them as testifying. This is what the Lord has done for me. This is the glory. But Jesus Christ, who did those miracles for them, was seeing them where they are committing fornication, where they are committing adultery, where they are committing homosexuality, where they are engaging themselves in dirty stuffs. And on the day Jesus will come back to them in this Mark chapter 11, it was raining curses upon them. Brothers and sisters, I want to pause here for tonight. Faith without repentance. Let me be honest with you. It is possible for somebody to be exercising faith without repentance, but it carries a danger of the cause from the Lord. If you can withstand that, But I want to tell you, nobody can withstand the curse from the Lord. Yamin again. But it is possible. One can be exercising faith without repentance, but it carries with it the curse of the Lord. And the curse of the Lord upon anybody is eternal condemnation, is eternity of hell, eternity of agony. Eternity of torment. And that is why this teaching is coming to you. That as we begin the journey for the year 2022, why we are going to be rejoicing, why we are going to be celebrating of the diverse miracle, signs and wonder the Lord will be doing to us and for us and through us like, a, like ministers, let us be checking our lives if there are no sin there that can bring the cause of the Lord in spite of his miracles that we are receiving. What is my challenge to you again to, tonight? I challenge you to develop your faith in Christ so that you can receive all the blessing that the Lord, the Lord has for you this year. But at the same time, I challenge you, examine your life. If there are things that you need to turn away from, so that the curse of the Lord will not follow the miracles that you have received. So that the curse of the Lord will not follow the healings that you have received. So that the curse of the Lord will not follow the breakthroughs that you have received. Brothers and sisters, as I close, I want you to pray like David. Search me, O God, and see if there is any offensive way in me and lead me the way everlasting. I was telling people in our meeting here on Sunday, that is my own prayer. Search me, O God, and see if there is any offensive way in me. That is, if there is anything in me that I need to repent of. Is there anything in me that I need to turn away from? That's the meaning of repentance. If there is anything I am doing, if there is any way I'm living that I need to turn away from, like Zacchaeus. Lord, search me and reveal them to me for your information. The Lord revealed to great prophet Isaiah that he need to turn away from filthy lips. You know I mean again? Isaiah chapter 6. The Lord revealed to him, Isaiah, you are a man of filthy lips. You have to turn away from filthy lips. And if I will be honest, many of us that go to churches today, in this age and time, even including some of us pastors, we need to turn away from filthy conversation, filthy comment, filthy talk, ungodly and ungodly chatters. These are the things that we need to turn away from. If the cause of the Lord will not accompany the miracles, the blessings, and the breakthroughs that we are receiving and that we are expecting from the Lord. Brothers and sisters, it is not too late. The word of the Lord coming to you, it is not to condemn you, it is to correct you. And I'm praying that by the Spirit of God, wherever you, as an individual, listening to this teaching, needs to turn away from things that may attract curse from God, even though you are benefactor of His miracle, may the Lord in His infinite mercy, first and foremost, open your eyes to them and bring you back to turn away from them. In repentance, not just with your mouth, but repentance from your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. People of God, 
This is where we are going to stop. Our first Berean Academy for the year 2022. I encourage you at your own layer time, listen to this teaching one more time. Share it with your friends, with your neighbors, and with those that you are joining together in the journey of the Christian faith. I believe it's going to bless them. And I believe it's going to challenge them. May the Lord, who is the giver of the word, he give the seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Be our help, both the speaker and the hearer, that the word that we have heard again tonight will not condemn us on the day that we are going to stand face to face before the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Before we pray, please let me remind you, if you are just joining us on this television, Image of Christ Television, I want to encourage you to please subscribe, press the notification button, and share so that anytime we post our meeting, you'll be notified that we are coming on here. And the Lord will bless you as you do so in the mighty name of Jesus. Permit me to say it again. If what we are receiving from this channel is blessing your whole life, don't keep it to yourself. Help us spread it to those that you love and to those that you are joining together on the path of righteousness. Having said that, until we come together again on Saturday, this Saturday is our month Kamel prayer hour. It's our second Saturday of the month prayer hour in our fellowship here. The time is 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Two hours of solid praying, supplication, intercession, knocking the heavens, and I'm believing God as we come together for that too. Heaven shall be open over us in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Until we meet again on Saturday, Lord willing, I remain yours, Timothy Abi Abiola, the pastor, Christ Apostolic Church, Vineyard of Comfort, Calgary Assembly, Canada. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, O God, in bringing your word to us again as we start the journey for the year 2022. That which you have sent to us tonight, I pray that your spirit will breathe upon us to become life in every heart and in every life that will be partaker of it. Those who are listening to it live and those who will listen to it after the recording. To the glory of your name, to the expansion of your kingdom, and to the transformation of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you all.